Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at your first look at Adobe Lightroom Mobile. It's a product and service I'm very excited about and let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. Well I'm here in Lightroom on the desktop and as you can see I've got several collections and what's new about this is on the left hand side of each collection there's now the ability to check or enable that collection to sync with Lightroom Mobile. So for example, I have several of my portfolios synced with Lightroom Mobile, and that means they sync up to the cloud, and then more importantly, down onto my iPad. Now, of course, many of these are raw files or Photoshop files that would be too large for me to want to sit and wait for them to sync up to the cloud, and more importantly, down to an iPad that probably doesn't have enough storage. So what this feature does is it takes advantage of Lightroom's smart previews. And those are what gets synced up to the cloud and then down to your iPad because they take up a lot less room, but give me all the benefits of looking at my images in nice high res on my iPad. And of course, making adjustments as needed that will sync back up to the cloud and then back down to the desktop. So let's take a look at um, how it works. So I've enabled a few collections here, and more importantly, I've enabled a collection here called Zeppelin Shoot. And that's the collection we're in right now. It has 34 photos on it. So if I toggle over to the iPad, we can see that there's an icon in the upper left hand or upper right hand corner there. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap. That's my Lightroom mobile icon. And as I scroll through, on Lightroom Mobile, we can see many of those same collections, my portfolios. So as a matter of fact, Lightroom Mobile is now gonna be my new portfolio tool. And if I were to um, tap on a collection, I would be able to quickly see all of the images in that collection. I would be able to tap again to zero in on a particular image, swipe to go to the next image, swipe to go back, or just go back to look at the collection in grid view. Now, of course, I can sort this any way I want. I can choose to just show me my unflagged images or pick flags or reject it. And I can sort by capture time, modified date and file name as of today. And we hope to have more sorting options going forward. All right, so let's go back and let's scroll all the way down to that Zeppelin uh, shoot collection that we were in on the desktop. And let's go ahead and tap on that one. And what I'd love to do now is go in and start looking at some of the images and looking at, more importantly, which ones I want to use. So if I just tap with two fingers, that will enable me to see um, a display that shows which ones were modified, which ones have pick flags. If I tap again, I can get some of the camera data. If I two, two finger tap one more time, that will give me information about the image itself, the name of the image when it was captured. And if I tap one more time, of course, that turns that display off. So it cycles through those three things just with a two finger tap. Um, so for example, if I go in and I go to a particular image and I like that particular image, I can go in and uh, swipe up to pick it as an image as a pick. If I swipe down, that will unflag it. If I swipe one down one more time, that will reject it. So I can swipe up and down between my picks and rejects. So that one's now a pick. If I swipe to the left, uh, that will bring the next image over and I can repeat that process, making that a pick or making it a reject. So it's very easy to now do your shoot, bring your images right in the Lightroom on the desktop. And then when you come back, um, to your or when you go to your iPad, you can go through and quickly review your images, mark your favorites as picks, mark your late, less than favorites as rejects, and then that information is automatically being synced in the background to the cloud and back down to the desktop. So when you return to your desktop, those picks are already there. As a matter of fact, uh, just as we were picking those, those picks were already happening in the desktop in the background wirelessly, whether I'm in the same building or not, as long as my iPad has a connection to the internet. All right, so let's go back and now let's take a look at adjustments. So uh, you can see down in the lower or the lower portion of the screen here, I've got my um, ability to see my thumbnails so I can quickly swipe between my images there and quickly go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, the next icon will show me adjustments, the typical adjustments we're used to in the develop module. So for example, if I wanted to adjust the white balance, I even have a white balance eyedropper. So I can move the eyedropper around and pick that as my white balance. Or if I don't like that particular white balance, I can go into uh, temperature 
and I can uh, dial, make it a little bit warmer. Here we'll make it a lot warmer or a lot less warm or cooler. So just being able to drag that adjustment uh, left and right to warm up my image as I see fit. And again, those adjustments are being made uh, as, I, as I make them to the cloud, synced, and then back down to the desktop. All right, so now uh, let's move on. We can, of course, do things like your blacks, your clarity, your vibrance, all the kinds of things you're used to doing on a desktop. So if I wanted to make that image a little bit more vibrant, I could. Now, of course, in Lightroom, we're also used to presets. And if I go to my preset options here, I have all the same default presets that are in Lightroom. So for example, if I decided that I wanted to make this a black and white, I go to my black and white looks, I can go to my black and white filters, I can go to my black and white toned, and uh, these are the same presets that I would find inside Lightroom. So if I wanted to make that more of a sepia tone, I could. I think that looks pretty cool, and we'll go ahead and leave it there. Um, and of course, as you would expect, you also have the ability to crop. So I can lock or unlock my uh, aspect ratio. So if I unlock the aspect ratio and just grab, now I can, lock, I can uh, crop this to my heart's content. Or if I lock the aspect ratio, that will keep it in the same aspect ratio as the original photo. And I have also presets or settings down at the bottom. So if I'm looking to crop it to a specific size, such as an eight, eight by 10 or 16 by 10, nine or a one by one square image for let's say Instagram, I can do that right here. So it's great to be able to do all of this right in Lightroom mobile and knowing that that information will happen or sync back up to the desktop when I'm done. All right, so let's go back. And of course that image has now been adjusted and that change is now being synced uh, to the cloud as we can see the little spinny thing next to the Wi-Fi uh, going on. All right, so um, let's see if I've got anything else here I wanna quickly show you. Uh, we have the ability to go in and um, share images as well. So if I choose the share option over here on the right-hand side, I can share a photo um, using the various ways. So for example, I can um, email it, iMessage it, so forth and so on. I can copy the images. And more importantly, this is not just a one-way thing. It's not desktop to the iPad only. So if you did a shoot and you brought your images into your iPad, you'd be able to sync them from the iPad back to the desktop. So you have the ability to go in either direction. So I can add to this collection, add photos that are already on the iPad to this collection that will then get synced back to Lightroom on the desktop. So you have a two-way workflow if you choose to use it. And of course, we have a slideshow feature as well, which is great in the portfolios that I would show, uh, being able to do a slideshow and have those uh, displayed. So Lightroom Mobile is going to be a huge benefit for those that kind of like to have everything with you, but without taking up all the space of the original RAW files, the original JPEGs or the original PSDs. So now if I go back out of this collection, and if we uh, go back and look on the desktop, that image came back over already with its adjustments. I didn't have to tell it to do anything, didn't have to click sync, didn't have to publish, it just happened. And that's what Lightroom Mobile is all about. Now, of course, there are other tips and tricks, there are other adjustments. So for example, if you're used to perhaps applying an adjustment to one image and then copying that adjustment to other images, you can. You can bring up your histogram, you can do all kinds of cool things in the editing in Lightroom Mobile. And of course, I'm gonna show you more tips and videos as we go forward, but this was just to give you a quick intro on how Lightroom Mobile works and how you're gonna be able to take advantage of it going forward as a Creative Cloud member. Uh, this is part of your membership as a full Creative Cloud member or if you're in the photography or Photoshop for Photographers deal. This is part of your membership. So all you have to do is just go and grab the latest version of Lightroom and grab the iPad app from the App Store, which is a free download, and away you go. Start syncing your collections, the ones you choose, your smart previews will get created automatically, sync up to the cloud, down to your iPad, and away you go. So that's it for this quick look, this first look at Adobe Lightroom Mobile. My name is Terry White. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you for more episodes in the future. Thank you. Bye. Uh -huh.